Well, and I felt a great sense of satisfaction when this was all done, and these had all been generated from the same point. And now what I had at this point was an eight and a half foot long piece of paper, graph paper, covered with colored pen strokes and tiny crab-like numbers, which I kept rolled in a bamboo tube, and I would corner people uh, in dime stores and bus stations, and I would say, you know what this is? This is a map of history. This is a picture of time. This is how things happen. Well, it triggered a lot of alarm in my immediate circle, and my friends were having the what should be done meetings, you know, <laughs> which it's always a bad sign when your friends hold meetings to decide what should be done. Uh, and finally, Ralph Abraham is a great friend and mathematician. Uh, he said to me, he said, you know what you have is an occult object. Nobody understands this thing but you. And it may make sense and it may, may not make sense, but the point is no one can tell. And what you have to do if you want to be taken seriously is you have to take this structure and you have to turn it into an ordinary mathematical object so that fellow uh, mathematicians can participate in this dialogue with you. Well, essentially, it was like telling a Hottentot to fly supersonically or something. I, I had no clue. I am, am not a mathematician. I had no clue. And I was sort of hoping Ralph would do it for me, you know, that I could con some smart guy into doing it for me. For me, Terence is uh, a, a special person because of the breadth of his knowledge and the um, uh, evidence of a phenomenal integrity within it. So, first of all, when we first met, uh, Terence uh, was um, persistent in asking me about mathematics, kind of mathematics that I was interested in at, at that time that nobody else had even heard about, and as our relationship developed, I saw that he had this uh, philosophy of time, let's say, or maybe even mathematical model for the structure of time. That is an odd thing for a, purpose, a person to be obsessed with, and from this obsession, he had to learn a great deal about history. So in our process of trialoguing, we find it very much enriched by Terence's phenomenal knowledge of history, and not only that, but his special way of saying it. It's sort of, a, you're familiar with this here, a bardic skill, so that whatever he says will have more effect than it actually deserves. <laughs> It's almost as though Western science was fascinated by energy. For 5,000 years we pursued understanding energy. And this process ends with thermonuclear explosions in the deserts of the American Southwest. We can light the fire that burns in the heart of the distant stars. We know how to do that. That's what the Western mind achieved, political issues aside. The Eastern mind, was not interested in energy. It was interested in time. And they spent 5,000 years deconstructing it, looking at it, and you don't use atom smashers. You don't use enormous physical pressure. It's a different problem, and you bring different tools to bear. You meditate, you look inside yourself, you study the m movement of water around pebbles, you consider the situation, you study history. So the general conclusion from these screens is that novelty is being increased and conserved as we move through time. Now, for instance, in this screen, which is further closure with today, we see uh, 
562 million years, virtually the entire career of higher life forms on the planet. 8,500 years on the screen, the great Proto-Egyptian civilization, Sumer, Ur, Chaldea, are strung out like pearls along this plunge. Egypt culminates that ancient hierarchical uh, form of dominator society. Mycenaean pirates plunder Minoan Crete. At this point, at this point, uh, here we have the Periclean Age in Athens. Here we have the Augustinian Age in Rome. Down here we have the Roman collapse and then the oscillating around a mean in a high novelty domain that has characterized time since the fall of the Roman Empire. The Dark Ages is here. Uh, the 10th century Islam is here. Uh, the Black Death, the discovery of America, the European Enlightenment, World War II. Adolf Hitler becomes Chancellor of Germany. The atom bomb is dropped on Hiroshima. The summer of love is up here. Then the Reagan era stretches down through here. And the moment that we're currently living through is right down in here.